Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Engineer Sam Wasabi. So in this video, we're going to continue from where we ended. This is our MSM of Mathematics Revision Playlist. All right, so in this question, we've been taught to solve the equation. So before we begin, do not forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so the question says, solve the equation that is a hand. So we are having 2 to the x minus 2. Oh, my minus doesn't minus props. So I have 2 to the x minus 2 to the power 2 minus x. Then the order of this is equal to negative 3. All right, so I want you to just remember something. Back in the days, you learned this bad boy, indices. Now, indices just gave you a shortcut of how many times you can repeatedly multiply the base by itself. If I have A raised to B, then my A is the base and B is the power. This notation is called the index notation. Now, I want you to also remember that under indices, you add some rules or laws rather. The first one told you to say that if I have the same bases being multiplied by one another, say A being multiplied A, provided that the powers are different or it could be the same, let's have N, then M, or N and N, it implies that I'll end up having A to the power N plus M. So if I have, say, for example, I have maybe a, let me say use the number 4 to let's say 1 minus x. This is the same as 1 having 4 to the power 1 times 4 to the minus x. Other than that, other rules you came across were rules that stated that if you have a to the minus n, this is equivalent to 1 over a to the n. This portion here is a negative index, while this portion here is a positive. So with these in mind, let us try to see how we can approach the question we have. Now, I can find means of applying the same laws of indices throughout. I'm having 2 to the x, then minus. So I can just open a bracket and say this is 2 to the power 2 times 2 to the minus x like that. And the order of this is equal to negative 3. But again, having negative indices won't satisfy my need. So I have to make sure that my negative index is made positive. But 2 to the power 4 can be simplified. Yeah, we can make it 4. It's 2 to the power 2 is a 2 times 2. The number of times the base being repeatedly multiplied by itself. Just remember from what I said. And this is multiplied by 1 over 2 to the x. And this is equal to negative 3. So we know that the scalar, which is a number here, in math, will always just have an effect on the 1. Please, don't be that smart person to say, oh, since I'm having 4 times 1 over 2 to the x, do there 1, do there 2. Please, please, don't do that drama. Please, I beg of you. If you like doing that, just after you clear your course, then you can do that back home. But now, I want you to understand this. You cannot do that. Just, just to clear up some things. Okay, so 2 to the x, then minus 4 times 1 is like 4 over 2 to the x being equal to negative 3. Now, if you look at this equation, it's quite crazy to solve it the way it is. So now, what's the best approach we can do? So what we can do is to look at something that doesn't make sense in this equation. Like If you look at it properly, like just looking at it, you'd find that you have 4, negative 3, but the sign that doesn't make sense here. You have 2 to the power x. Honestly, what am I supposed to do with that? So now, in math, whenever you come across such a condition, I always make it, you know, to make more sense in your head. So I'll let this thing that doesn't make sense to me, 2 to the x, be equal to any letter of my choice other than x. Most books will use p, others will use m, others n. In my choice, in my case, I will use y. Because why not? It's just y. So, whenever there is 2 to the power x, pawns f here, everywhere. So, wherever I have that, I will put y. So, I'm going to have y minus 4 
over y being equal to negative 3. I know most of us don't really like, okay, I don't know. I don't like seeing things at the bottom in math. I don't know. I'm not saying it scares me, but uh, I just don't like it. So, the best thing we can do is to eliminate the bottom values. But how can we do that, guys? Like, how can we do that? Does anyone have an idea? Alright, so I guess everybody knows how we can do that. Others can actually say just 1 over 1, sorry, like y over 1, and then look for the common denominator, should be y, then do the cross multiplication, all that. But all you can do as well is just multiply the entire equation by y. Yeah, like the bottom value that really means everything. And this implies that you end up having y times y, because it's like y. Affecting that guy, so you're going to have like y squared. And like when y goes there, you have 4y. But since it's over y, y will cancel out with y. And now just have minus 4. And this will be equal to negative 3 affected by y as well. Yep, I thought you would hide. But anyway, that will be equal to negative 3y. Then after that, I'll look at it and be like, okay, what is this? What is this trying to tell me? So I have 1y squared. I have like a 3, negative 3y. Then I have a constant. So, this is safe to say that this bad boy here, star, is a quadratic equation. So, you have y squared, let me take this 3. Yeah, I can take this 3, this side. It will cross the equal sign. I don't know how, I don't even know how it jumps, but my Zambian people always say negative 3 will jump the other side. Yes, I don't know how, but let's just agree to disagree that it will jump. But this will be plus 3y, and then it will be like minus 4, and this will be equal to what? 0. For the sake of education, it doesn't jump. It's like you are finding the additive inverse. Yes, hope that's clear. All right, so now, because I do not have enough space on the screen, I will erase this information, but I hope it doesn't get erased from your head. Okay, so I'm having this guy here. So what can I do with this guy? So I can try and find the values of y. Okay, let's apply the sum and product technique. This is like one of our favorite guy now. So this will be the sum is 3. The product is negative 4. Now what are the factors? What numbers are those? Maybe let me try 2 and 2. So give me 2, 2, that's 4. Okay, that won't work. That was just a joke. Okay, so now I assume that we know the factors, isn't it? So it's like 1 and uh, 4 itself. So one of these guys should be negative. So I'll put one to be negative so that I can get a positive three when I sum it up. So, you know, if you get those factors, do that method that you like. You can always get those values, but I'm going to do my method. Remember, so long as the leading power, the leading term has a coefficient of one, you have y minus one, then y plus what? Four, and this is equal to what? Zero. So I'm having something like y minus one. Okay, let me just enclose that is equal to zero so i'm having something like y being equal to one as the first value of y and then the second value of y is like y plus four is equal to zero so like y is equal to negative four so that's why that's what y is equal to so now i want you to get this right remember initially we did let two to the x be equal to y so you solving for y doesn't necessarily mean that you have solved the equation or you've solved literally everything you needed not really you haven't so remember if 2 to the x is equal to y then what are the values of x so the values of y that i have because i'm trying to look for the values of x so basically when you reach this point all you just do is to apply the indices laws make sure that the bases balance out like what base do you have here two yes then the other side, I have 1, but I can make it 2 from that. Let's see what we can do. 2 to the x being equal to what? 2. But what power can I put to 2 such that if I evaluate it, I'll get my 1? Exactly. It's 0, right? So that's 0. Then you can just cancel this and that and drop the power. So therefore, x is equal to what? 0. Now, how do I know that this value of x holds true? If I get this 0, boom. I lift it. So we start running away, scrubbing everything. Plug it there. And also there. So if I plug my x in all the x's in my original question, I have to get the value that I have this side. So x is 0. So 2 to the power 0, isn't it? If I put 0 there, 2 to the power 0 is 1, but 2 to the power 2 is 4. Then 1 minus 
4 is negative 3. So it's true. Then again, we have 2 to the x be equal to the other value. We have negative what? 4. Because this is where it gets really interesting. Um, if at all I was applying logs, there's no... Having a negative log won't make sense. In most cases, we don't follow that procedure. But for the sake of humanity and the world at large, I want you to understand that if I don't have to apply logs, there's a point whereby that negative will go back on top. Yes, just believe it will go back on top. So let's see. So I have 2 to the x being equal to negative of 2. What power can I put to 2 such that if I evaluate, I get 4. I can say 2 like that. Then again, remember, I just have to cancel out these guys and I have x being equal to... I got, trust me, if I applied logs here... Pff, this guy would have gone there. But I just want you to understand how to solve this question. This question, sorry. From an indis point of view. So x is equal to what? Negative 2. So now, is this if I'm correct? Let's see. If I get negative 2, I plug it there. If I get negative 2. Okay, so that would be like 2 times negative 2 being equal to, eh, sorry, 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 minus eh? 2 times 2 minus minus 2. Which would be a plus rather now should be to the power of 4. So I'll be like 1 over 2 to the 2, then like minus 2 to the 4, then I'll be like 1 over 4, then minus like 2 times 2 is 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. So I'll be like 16 over 1. Okay, so because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So that's the case. If I look for my common denominator, which be 4, I'll be having like 1 minus uh, you know, if you say like 4 times 16, you end up having something like 64, like that, yeah. And then if you say 1 minus 64, you get 63, and even if you divide it by that guy, it will not give you a value that satisfies our equation. Now, this just tells you to say that whenever you have a negative case here, then the entire scenario here will hold to be undefined. This means that we we'll only have one value of x. x is just equal to 0. If at all we had other values rather than this, x would have held true for that condition that is there. So which means that therefore x is just equal to what? 0. Okay, so now, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, okay, I have an idea. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do this. Because I'm 100% sure, you know, like I was saying in the previous videos, at first glance, these things might be a bit tricky, maybe tedious, they might be demoralized, you might think, no, these things are very difficult, but again, if you just practice huh? and watch the videos over and over again, uh, trust me, you'll get ahead of it. So now, I want us to solve another problem so that I can make you understand of what I mean. Okay, so imagine if I had something else, like say I have 2 to the x, 2 to the power 2, then plus 2 to the power 1 minus x, and this is equal to positive 3 like that so what will happen here is uh this i will first reconstruct this equation i'll say okay i can evaluate 2 to the 2 because that is like 4 okay and then it should be like plus then it should be like 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the minus x and this is equal to what 3 okay so Okay, yeah, it wasn't 2 to the power 2, it was 2 to the power x, because it's not like a damn question in having 2 to the power 2. So, it's like that. That's what it was supposed to be. Sorry for the tie, the syntax error. Okay, so, um, we take it like that. So, we'll have it like this. I hope no one has, or is in a state of a powerful. Okay, so, we're going to have 2 to the x plus 2 over 2 to the x, because I've just converted this guy to a positive guy. And then this is equal to what? 3. So I've reached that stage where things were not making sense. So now let's try and let 2 to the x equal to y. So we have this like y plus 2 to the y being equal to what? 3. Multiply by what? 
y and you have y squared plus 2 being equal to 3y. Then you have y squared minus 3y plus 2 is equal to what? 0. I hope you have gotten what I've done. Alright, after that, we can solve for y. We know that we have y squared minus 3y plus 2 is equal to 0. Sum and product. The sum is negative 3, the product is 2. What are these numbers? Negative 1 and negative 2. So you have y minus 1 and y minus 2 is equal to 0. So y is equal to 1. And then again, y is equal to 2. Remember, initially, it's 2 to the x being equal to y. The first y is y. So 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the 0. Can you see that? x is equal to what? 0. Find the first x. If I get 0 plug there, I have 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1 minus 0. That's like 2 to the 1. It's like a 2 plus 1. It's 3. But again, if I do 2 to the x being equal to 2, remember 2, without anything without the power, has 1. Cancels, cancels. You have x being equal to what? 1. So I put 1 there. I have 2 to the 1 to give me like 2. Then again, I have 2 to the 1 minus 1, which is 0. So like anything with the power 0 is 1. So I end up having like a 1 here. Then I have like 2 plus 1 giving me 3. Which means that these hold true. They are the values of x that we need in question. So that's what I meant when I said, okay, if it's negative, don't really solve anything. It will not work out. It will not work out. So if this was like negative 2, nope, it's just to let it be. You just have one value. So the second question involves the same idea, but in this case, they have just given us the Euler's number, which is e. So if we have this, then 2 to the x minus 21 is equal to what? 0. So basically, we have to look for a way in which we can alternatively create a quadratic equation from this. Since we have e to the 4x and plus 4e to the power 2x then minus 21, we look for the, I would say, the e value such that if you had to alternatively manipulate it, it will give you a case where the powers are the same and you can end up substituting for a variable like we did for y in the previous problem. So if I have e to the 4x, this is the same as e to the power 2 times 2x. Or rather, you can alternatively write it as e to the 2x then times what? 2. Because this will give, basically give you e to the 4x. And then this will be plus 4e to the 2x then minus 21 and this is equal to what? 0. At this point, you can literally substitute for e to the 2x, isn't it? Because we want to find for x. So we can say, okay, let's let e to the 2x equal to y. It can be anything if you don't want to use y, as long as it's not e or x. So this portion here and that portion becomes y. So we have y squared plus 4y minus 21. And this is equal to 0. Then solve for y by using the sum and product technique. So sum is for... The product is negative 21. You have the factors, which would be what? What would be the factors in this case? Uh, this would be, should be 7 and 3. Yeah, 7 and 3. Of which one is negative and the negative is a 3. Because 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. If you sum it up, you get a positive 4. So you have y plus 7. Then again, y minus 3. And this is equal to 0. So if you solve for these two factors, you have y being equal to negative 7 or y being equal to positive 3. three. So now this is negative. Automatically, this gives you no solution. That's what's going on. So I take this to nothing. So I'll only consider this guy. So I'll say this becomes star. So star is y being equal to 3. But we did make mention that y is alternatively e to the 2x. So e to the 2x is y being equal to what? 3. Now, for us to solve such a, an equation that is having e and we want to find the value of x, what we do is that we do not introduce logs. For e, we introduce what is called ln. So this will be ln e to the 2x being equal to ln what? 3. Now, the power of logs is that whenever you have this power, to always drop in front and you have 2x times ln e being equal to ln 3. Now ln e 
be mindful that ln e will always be what? 1. So if that's the case, then you have 2x times 1 is equal to ln e. So you have 2x being equal to ln e and divided by 2, then divided by 2, we basically have the value of x in this case, as I for just say, x is equal to ln 3 over 2. And that is our answer. I don't think we really have to now just start proving for this because you are near than e. So ln e over 2 is ln e 3 over 2 is basically just the value of x. So we'll move on to the next problem. So it's like we're just using the same technique throughout. So solve the equation where we have this. We're having e to the 3x over e to the minus x, then minus 21 being equal to minus 4 e to the 2x. All right, so basically for this one, the key was what they gave you here. They gave you e to the minus x. This basically just means that if you had to do up a data and understand what's going on here, is that you have e to the 3x divided by e to the minus x, of which e to the minus x has to be made positive. So we have e to the 3x, then I would say, okay, it's the same multiplication, isn't it? Okay, no, it's just a division for now. So this should be 1 over e to the positive x, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So e to the 3x times e to the x over 1. Basically, you have e to the 3x plus x cause some bases different powers are the same provided this multiplication in the middle you add the powers so you have e to the 4x so now that we have this we can now say that we have this portion here is basically general just e to the 4x minus 21 being equal to minus 4e to the 2x now e to the 4x since we want to look at the lowest e uh, to the power value, we say e to the 2x, then times 2, then minus 21 is equal to minus 4e to the 2x. So I'm looking for an alternative variable, so I'll let e to the 2x be equal to y. So this basically means that these portions here are y variables. So you have that minus 21 being equal to minus 4y. Then you can make a quadratic from this, take this guy the other side, and you have y squared plus 4y minus 21, and this is equal to 0. So we can alternatively solve for y here by using the sum and product. Sum is 4, product is negative 21. I think this is the same question as the previous one, 7 and 3. This is negative, so you have y plus 7, then y minus 3, and this is equal to 0. So y is equal to negative 7 as the first 0, and y is equal to 3. Alternatively, we know this will give us no solutions. So we're not consider it, take it to nothing. So since we now know, we already know that um, y is equal to 3, and y is e to the 2x being equal to 3, this is like the previous question we had, so basically x is equal to ln 3 over 2. I feel like we just changed something from it. Yeah, just changed something. But basically the procedure is one and the same, and we've done literally the same thing. And the answer is the same. It's not always that it will always be like the same thing. It's coincidence. So, this is like everything we're going to do on exponential as at now. So we'll move on to logs type of problems so log equations are like exponential equations rather this time we just apply some basic ideas so if we say log 3 then we have 2 minus 3x is equal to log base 9 then 6x squared minus 19x plus 2 all right so uh for this one so the best way we can do this is by converting the logs that's the best thing to do so what we'll do is that we'll convert these bases into the same base logs. So I'll say um, log base 3. Alternatively, it will be like this. Then, of course, if you want to convert, let's put it by the side. If I have log A, then B. If I have to convert this to a certain log value I need, I'll say log of my interest base times B over log of my interest base times a 
So my interest log base is 3. So it's going to be log of 2 minus 3x over again log of my interest 3 of 3. I'll do the same on the other side. So it will be log of my interest 3 of 6x squared minus 19x plus 2 over log of my interest 3 of 9. Now, basically, if you have log 3, then 3, and you want to solve for what it's equivalent to, we know um, log, if you have a to the power of that, it should give you some answer, isn't it? So this is like the base, this is the power, and that's basically the answer. So it's always log base answer is equal to power. So I'm trying to take this to that and see to it that I try to solve. Yes. So for that alternative noise I hear even from my phone, I'd advise that uh, the next time I try to make a video, I always try to put the phones on silent. You should also put your phones on silent. Yeah, I feel like that's better. Anyway, so break is over. Move on. So this simply means that we'll have the base 3, the power of x is equal to the answer 3. So it basically tells you that x is equal to what? 1. So we know that this takes us to 1. And then if I do the same on the other part, I have like log base 3, 9, and I want to know the value, I'll have 3 to the x being equal to 9. And I can make these bases the same, and 3 to the x will be 3. How many times can I raise it to get 9? It's 2. And now x is equal to 2. So I now know that this takes me to 2. Alright, so with that in mind, we can now write it in a not so complicated way. So this would be log 3 of 2 minus 3x. Yeah, 3 is not given. Okay, 3x over 1 is equal to log 3 of 6x squared minus 19x plus 2. And this is over 2. two. Then we can do the cross multiplication. This would be 2 log 3 of 2 minus 3x being equal to log 3 of 6x squared minus 19x plus 2. According to logs, this goes back and becomes the power there. So you have log 3, then 2 minus 3x to the power 2 is equal to log base 3 of 6x squared minus 19x plus 2. Basically, even if you do the log base answer technique, you understand that the logs having the same basis does it give you the parenthesis value. So you just cancel them out. Alright, so that's the case. So we now have 2 minus 3x squared is equal to 6x squared minus 19x plus 2. And now we have to do is now just solve this. Okay, so we'll just use, so when you expand what you have here, you have 4, then this would be 6 and 12, so minus 12x plus 9x squared is equal to 6x squared minus 19x plus 2. That's what you're going to have. When you expand this, you square the first, you get what? Uh, 4, you multiply the 2, you get negative 6 and times 2, that's 12x, then the last. So you can always put like everything on one side of the equation. So I'll say 9x squared, then minus 6x squared, then negative 12x, then plus 19x, then I have a plus 4, then a minus 2 is equal to 0. This will give you 3x squared. This will give you a value that would be what? 7. So plus 7x, then plus 2 is equal to 0. Then we try the sum and product technique. 7 and 6. That's 1 and 6. So we'll place them in the middle. Or we'll just say 3x squared plus x plus 6x plus 2 is equal to 0. Factorize by grouping. You get x. Then brackets 3x plus 1. Then 2. Then 3x plus 1 again. This is equal to 0. So you have x plus 2. Then again, 3x plus 1. And this is equal to 0. So you have x for the first factor, you have x being equal to negative 2. The second one is 3x. No, you have x being equal to negative... Is it? Negative 1 over 3. Oh, these are just x values. Alright, what's f? So, these are the values of x. 
it's one time I thought we were solving something else. So these are the values of x. So we have to do is test them. But uh, no, they will still they will all come out. Yeah, so these are the values of x and they are all correct. But you can still test them and check if they work. Yeah, you can still test them and check if they work. Okay, so this is the last question that we're doing under exponential and logs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we move on. So show the equation. When you have log 2 of x plus 5 is equal to 5 minus log 2x. Yeah. So show that this can be written as a quadratic equation in terms of x and solve for that particular equation. So what we can do is that you can equate all logs on one side because the bases are the same. So you have log base 2, then x plus 5, then plus log base 2, then x. Whenever you have like log same base a and b plus log base a, c, this is equal to log base a of b times c. If there's a minus, it will be division. So if you had a minus with the same quantities here, it will be log a of b over c. So that's just the rules we have. So this is equal to 5. So you have log 2 of x plus 5. So it's going to be log, just put it in this way, as x times x plus 5, because they're multiplying each other, is equal to 5. So you have log base 2, giving you x squared plus 5x, being equal to 5. So remember log base answer, base uh, power answer. So the base is 2, power 5 is equal to x squared plus 5x. So this is like x squared plus 5x being equal to negative 2 to the power 5. And 2 to the power 5 is 2 times 2 is what? This will give us 32, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we have x squared plus 5x. Wait, what's going on? Better. Uh -huh. So this will be minus 32 is equal to what? 0, of course. This goes the other side, so that's what's going on. So we have x squared plus 5x minus 32 is equal to 0. Sum and product will not work for this because now they're saying, oh, first portion solved. Saying so show, uh, show that the equation, this equation here, can be written in a quadratic equation in terms of x. So uh, here's shown. Like that. Okay. So that is what we have x squared minus a. so since we have x squared minus 5x i don't know if it's a minus so plus plus then minus 32 is equal to zero last question is just saying hence solve the equation so it's just to solve this basically sum and product will not work so no so what you do is that you use x is equal to negative b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a so i think you finish it up from that all right so this concludes the end of the first part of exponential analogs